Okay, hi everybody. Let me uh, mute the lines here and if you jump on here, well, you won't know because you won't be on yet. Anyway, okay, so hi everybody. I'm Kaylin Hobbs and I get the pleasure of doing our training call tonight. I'm here in Kansas City, Missouri, technically. Uh, I really live in a small town north of Kansas City, but that is kind of on topic with my, um, it's in line with my topic tonight. And I'm gonna talk to you guys about the power of events to build your team and your business. So before I get into the meat of what I wanna talk about, just to give you guys a little bit of background, before I retired from corporate America to build my Isogenics business full time, I was in corporate marketing, so for 17 years. So this kind of stuff gets me really excited. And a big part of what I did with any position that I ever had was event planning. So I love it because it gives you an opportunity to be super creative and you have total flexibility with whatever you want to do. So before we get into it though, guys, this is going to seem random, but it's going to make sense. In the chat, and I want to see the chat here, is there a place that you guys have on your vision board that you really want to travel to? Would you guys put that in the comments? I promise it's relevant. <laughs> okay, so somewhere that you'd like to travel to. What about possibly a car? your dream car, a car that you would love to have, or a style of home that you'd love to have. What's your dream home, your dream car, your dream vacation? Just drop some of those things in the comments here. I'll give everybody just a second. There can't just be four people that have something on their vision board. You guys are faking it. <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> here come some people. All right, so these dreams, these places that you want to go, the cars that you want to have, things like that, would you agree that you could probably Google it and find an image? Right? Because you probably did if it's on your vision board. And would you agree that you could, in your Googling of these things that you want, these places you want to go, you could learn a lot about the, these places. Or you could talk to Carla about Italy specifically, right? And Robin has a car that I really like. She could tell me all about that car, okay? So you could do, you could get the facts, you could get some research, somebody could send you a link but it's not the same as actually going there, right? It's not the same as driving the car or owning the car, having it actually in your garage. You guys get where I'm going with this? Okay, so when it comes to events, what events are doing are creating authentic, original experiences for people because, and I'm sure you guys heard this or if you were on the, call, I think it was Thursday that I did it. I was talking about launch parties and I gave you guys the quote, we've all heard it, that facts tell and stories sell. Well, events seal the deal. And I know that doesn't rhyme, but <laughs> I'll come up with something creative that rhymes. Okay. So in creating events and the reason that so many, have you noticed that other big corporations and people are more and more, there's event branding, event marketing. And the reason is, is because it creates this relationship with the brand. And in your case, guys, you are your brand. All right. So it's creating relationships with people that they can't just get from watching a video here. Let me send you this link. And I get it. And I do it a ton because it's super easy. Right. But it goes beyond that. Are you leaving? Okay. All right. So when I mentioned that corporations, larger companies, you know, traditional corporate America businesses are actually having an increase in event marketing. In fact, in that sector, job growth for event planners is three times what it has been for the next 10 years. And that's because people are seeking out more and more authentic experiences and relationships. Okay, so this is important. How many, do you guys do events 
now, sometimes, sometimes, okay, all right, that's good. Okay, so I'm gonna get specific here with how you can related to isogenics in your business. So let me, where is my presentation? Hold on. Can you guys see that? Jennifer, I see, okay, okay. All right, now is it full screen? Okay, Woo. almost had a panic attack there. Okay, so events with Isogenic. So here is what I would call a, um, a launch party. And in this event, you know, especially when you're first letting your friends and family know that you're building a business or that you're using the product you're wanting to share with Isogenics, a launch party is a great way to do that because your friends, your family, they trust you. So you can open up your home, or maybe it's a friend's home, that you can get really creative with your space. This, is, this event was hosted by Nicole Anderson. She's in that picture. She's standing by the kitchen counter there, if you can see her. She is really, really exceptional at launch parties and showing different ways that she uses the products in her life. And that's, that goes so much further than just standing up and talking about the ingredients in the cleanse because most people don't even really want to know all of that, but they want to see how you, their friend, are being authentic and what your product experience is. So they can imagine how their lives will look when they're incorporating isogenics as well. You know, if I just had people over and just showed them my refrigerator and my cabinets with all my products in it and said, well, here, I just use all of this. Nobody's going to sign up. <laughs> Trust me. Right. But if you're showing like, Hey, it's so easy. Put some greens in your guacamole, um, make some protein balls, have the way thins out as little snack samples. I will say guys too, Nicole is really, really good at this. Um, she is really good at making recipes with the product. So if you are into that, awesome. If you're not, if you're more like me, cutting up some bars to have samples, having some other, um, you know, depending on the time of day, lunch or happy hour type of foods. But yeah, I can toss some greens in the guacamole. That's not hard. Okay. So you don't have to make a whole bunch of original recipes here, but have a nice mix of either using the products and things that you would serve or having the product set up separately as just little sample taste mixed in with your other um, traditional foods like vegetable trays, little sandwiches, things like that. Okay. So another thing that you can do. So this is, this was a team building happy hour that we had that Chris Berline hosted. If you don't know Chris, she's the hostess with the most is there in front the polka dot top. So we had this last Friday, I think it was, just getting our team together. There was no big mission or agenda involved. It was simply to get, get as many people together to solidify our team and build our culture. And we had a great time. I hope you guys can see everybody in this, in this picture here. Okay, moving on. Oops, there we go. Okay, smoothie bowl parties. This is one that I did at my local gym. That's my mom and my daughter. And I have kind of a part two of this that I'll show you something really fun that we did. But guys, smoothie bowl parties are really, really fun and super easy and everybody loves them. And it absolutely blows my mind how many people don't know what you're talking about when you say smoothie bowl. Okay, I, so they're excited about it. They're like, wait, what's a smoothie bowl? And you can find all sorts of cool images to promote your event and things like that. Just Google smoothie bowls or whatever photo apps that you use to find them. But just getting, so this was at a gym. This was specific, you know, that I was sampling isogenics. But you can also do this, I think I have some pictures, where you're just getting some people together. Um, I've got one coming up here. I'll show you this. This was a workout that we did. We called this booties and bowls, all right? So 
just had some people over, did a group workout, served smoothie bowls after, just to introduce people to the culture and to just to, to introduce them to the product in a really cool, comfortable, approachable sort of way. Now, depending on your audience, if they want to get more into the products, you can. But the, for an event like this, it was just nice, low pressure. And then people asked on their own because you can have other products sitting out. Um, but, you know, just giving everybody the smoothie bowl. You can, you can do a formal presentation if that's what you want to do. But I like to do that. Please don't do this. I like to do that on specific occasions. And I'll talk to you a little bit more about this. So this was, a, you can call this like a sweat and sample. That's what we call them a lot with team isogenics. So here, business training day, kitchen tables, Carrie. Um, so getting, getting your team together. Can you guys still hear me? Because I just got a weird message that said I was signed out. You can? Okay. Uh, getting your team together so that, um, again, creating your culture, making sure everybody's on the same page, just getting in each other's energy. That's another example of getting an event together that's really going to help solidify your team. Okay, now remember when I said the smoothie bowl party that I did at my gym and I had a part two? Guys, this was an idea that I just came up with when I did this and I highly recommend it. So if you've been um, scrolling on your phone or something, pay attention to this part, okay? So at this recent, um, this was at a health fair, a vendor fair, I'm sorry. So people obviously knew that I was there to promote isogenics, very straightforward, and I did smoothie bowls. But then I, I had everybody, whoever was willing, to enter a smoothie bowl photo contest. And let me tell you why this was kind of great, all right? So what this gave me was everybody's photo, their name, because they, I, I, we put their number on the chalkboard, and then I had a, a master list of their name and their phone number so that I could notify them if they won. We took a picture with um, them and their smoothie bowl. Now, I actually posted these to my Facebook to get the votes. You don't have to do that, and if you do this a lot, you'd probably drive your audience crazy if you're constantly posting uh, a smoothie bowl photo contest, but um, every now and then, or put it in your team and have them vote. So I had votes um, for this and picked a winner and they got a sample shaker cup, you know, with all that. But here's how it really helped me is it gave me every single person's contact information and it also gave me their photo that I could cross reference. I remember this girl, her name is Kelsey. I could tell you exactly what we talked about and it was just really good for establishing that relationship. And in fact, her contact, all these people, their contacts in my phone, I saved their smoothie bowl picture with it. So I remember, okay? So that is a fun thing to do. And at whatever your event is, figure out a way to do some kind of photo contest, especially if it's where you're getting a lot of people, if you're doing a vendor fair or something like that. Um, this, was, this worked really, really well. Here's another smoothie bowl thing that you can do. Again, just get your name out there, be building your brand. This is Julia, and this was at her daughter's, um, or her kids' swim meet, okay? Did smoothie bowls for the parents. She wasn't there trying to sign up people on the spot, but you know what? She did sign some people up, and she got a lot of questions, and now that entire swim team, which guys, trust me, there was a lot of people there, um, that is not my scene. There was a lot of people there. She's the isogenics person for their team. Now they all know it. She's building her brand. Okay. So this was great. And guys, you can do this at such a, a low cost. When you're serving a smoothie bowl, you're not even serving a full shake. Those little ice cream cups that you saw in the previous slide, Party City online, it was like a sleeve of 20 for $2.99. Okay. You don't have to be serving full shakes. In fact, I, do, I would not recommend serving full shakes. Here was another one. So I have a person in my team who has a makeup business. She's a customer of mine. I'm a customer of hers. So we created these muscles and mascara events. I brought her customers. She brought me customers. Everybody won in the end. Um, our theme for this is muscles and mascara, beauty from the inside out. So the way that we tie that in was as, every, as, as people were getting their makeovers, I'm explaining how isogenics works 
on a cellular level. If you look, you zoom into that picture, you can see my, all my products are set up there in the background, just over Tony's shoulder there. But so we were explaining how, you know, fueling your body properly to have that be your healthiest self. It also shows up on your skin and then your makeup wears better and you need less. And it was just a really good, fun event of people coming who already care about looking and feeling good. Okay, those events are super fun because everyone's in the market. <laughs> okay? Now you know this was one of my favorite parties. A healthy-ish happy hour <laughs> that you can do. And guys, I know there's, there's comments. I can't see them right now, but I will as soon as I stop sharing my screen. So a healthy-ish happy hour. This was super duper fun. I will share some of these recipes um, if you guys want them, but I just fi figured out how to add a benefit with an isogenics product by either removing a sugar with using a product or just adding something. So this was my sangria recipe. You can see it's very heavy on the booze. So I just added a little bit of isofruits to it instead of a uh, cran grape juice that I would normally add per my original recipe. So you can, this would be a good team event for you guys to get together for a happy hour and mix up the drinks that you're going to serve and have a team building event and plan out your happy hour. So I had three or four different drinks like this. Um, I we served some, again, the guacamole with the greens and it was super good. So I served a couple food items, incorporating products as well. And again, it just shows everybody like, this is a lifestyle. This doesn't mean you just drink a shake and eat kale salads and stare at chicken. Like, come on. So it's just showing people how relatable um, this can be. And last but not least in my little photo montage here is have events just for the sake of getting people together. No agenda, no presentation, no, I want you to join my business, unless the caveat is if somebody else asks you, okay? So all of these ladies here, none of them are in my business. One has been before, but is not active. Um, we just got together. And you know what? The other three all asked me about it before the night was over, and I wasn't talking about it at all. There's no product set up. We were just girls getting together and having a really good time. And that is so important to do, guys, and to not lose sight of that, that you're always trying to expand your network and not just always, you know, that you have an agenda, right? Um, because it's going to help build trust. There you go. Can you guys see me now? It's going to help you build trust. With, with your audience and these people that you're trying to reach so that when you do want to talk to them about isogenics, about the products for their health or about the opportunity, they're warmed up to it because they, are, they know you and they know that they can trust you. So having events, doing things, going to more things, that doesn't mean you have to spend a ton of Marty, money throwing a party every weekend, but just participate in things or create reasons. It doesn't even have to be on your dime. Say, hey, who wants to go play pickleball next Friday? Like, let's get see how many courts we could get. Just do things for the sake of building community, period. And I promise you that will show up in your business. Now, I have a lot of things that I want to share with you guys about the power of events. But I also, before, in case I run out of time, because I have like 10 minutes left, but I'd like to give you guys, if it's okay, my absolute event don't. Here's, you know, you can't say the wrong thing to the right person, right? But there's one thing you really can do wrong with an event, and it's really just one. And that is to bait and switch people, okay? Don't tell people they're coming over for a happy hour where you've given no indication that you're also going to talk about isogenics, if that's your plan, okay? Nothing's worse than when you show up at somebody's event and you realize you're there for a completely different reason that you had no idea. Guys, it puts people on the defensive. It doesn't build trust at all. And it seriously like makes me cringe. 
Okay, so just remember, like if it's not an event that you would go to or that you would respond to, it's probably not a good one, right? Think of something else, okay? Because you're gonna attract people like you, so you've gotta be creating and doing things that you would wanna do. And I don't think anybody on this call would appreciate it if they were invited to uh, whoever your major football team is. So Kansas City Chiefs, if I was invited to a Chiefs game in a suite by a friend and then I got there and realized that it was, um, I'm not slamming any other company, but realized it was an Arbonne party, I'd lose my mind. Like, I thought you were just inviting me to the, to the Chiefs game, right? So that's the only don't. So when you're having an event, if you're having a healthy happy hour, you do wanna make sure that you're upfront, like, hey, come to my healthy-ish happy hour. I'm gonna show you how I incorporate some healthy hacks into my life with these products, and we're just gonna have a good time. Like, that's being upfront, okay? Everybody, everybody clear on that? Everybody get what I'm talking about? I see some head nods. Okay, so I'm going to go on. So again, the power of events. As you guys can see from some of the photos that I captured, and if you uh, follow me or ever see me post these, social events are ripe for social media sharing. They give you so many photo ops. They also give you photos that you can use on a rainy day when you're like, I want to make a post, but I don't have a photo to go with it. Okay, we, we will know that at events, I'm always snapping the photos, whether I'm gonna post them right then or not. So they are designed to give you um, social sharing, and it also creates a lot of FOMO. I cannot tell you guys how many people have reached out to me because they see our Workday Wednesday posts. Even though they don't comment, they're like, I wanna be joining you guys. I wanna get out of my office. It really does create FOMO, and it's hard to create FOMO if you're just posting a link to an article. Okay, so have the event, show the culture, let people know, you know, what they're missing out on that way. Um, so when you have your events, you do want to set some goals, though I do recommend, you know, maybe your goal is like, I just want to get some practice talking about the product. That is a great goal. Okay, maybe your goal is if you've been a little more experienced, if like, okay, my goal is to have 10 people say they're coming and have eight people really show up and have, you know, or of them sign up or whatever your goals are. Again, make them smart and attainable and all of that. But do set some goals for yourself be, um, as you're creating as you're creating the event. Um, you also want to think about your event and what are people going to say about it after. Okay, so you want to keep it really simple. That's why you know, like, okay, the the smoothie bowls or it was the the cocktails. It wasn't okay, we're gonna make smoothie bowls and we're gonna make protein balls. And you know, you don't wanna overwhelm people. You wanna make it really easy for them to talk about and tell people afterward, like, hey, what was that, what was that thing that I saw you at Dawn's house? It's like, what was that? They should be able to very simply, you know, say, oh, you know, he had us over and um, we, and I don't know if you would do this, Dawn, but like we had a, a healthy happy hour. It was really cool. He showed us some cool hacks and you know, looks like a good product. Like you want to think about like, what will people be able to say after they leave, after they leave this event? You're, it's giving them a good um, narrative that way. And I, was, I already said that it's good, really good for social sharing. So also when you're creating an event, you want to think about um, the secondary audience. So the people that are watching when you're posting and the, like, that's why those smoothie bowl photos were fun. Um, Again, guys, I don't want to make this super complicated, but if you've got a good spot at your location that's really good for photos, you know, like make a fun little photo area for people to take pictures. It's so simple. And I know we got a lot of Pinteresty people that could probably come up with some really awesome, you know, fun ideas. Um, you could uh, even you know, get a cardboard cut out of a giant shake or something and do a photo booth. I don't know. Just make it on, on the theme with, with what you're doing, okay? Um, and also, you do um, two more things, guys, and then I'm done. I think I'll be right on time. So when you're doing these events, we it's more fun to do it together, right? So partner up with somebody that, um, you know, Lisa and Carrie, I know you guys live close together, so it's easier to do events. Um, Chris and I do a lot with Nicole. Tiffany lives nearby now, so we'll be able to do that. Um, and so when you are coordinating, when you're collaborating with events, 
also make sure that you are also working the room okay even if so like if i was in town and i came to carrie and lisa's event i'm not there as a guest i'm there to talk and you know meet people and you know not just hang out with the people that i know so you really each you know make sure you're always like working the room and really helping people to feel connected that way but doing events together is fun because the bigger the event the better right it's just more energy um and finally guys your follow-up after your event how are you going to follow up that's why i like that photo contest you know um how are you going to follow up maybe it's to let them know when the next event is it's always a good idea to know what your next event is before your, the current event ends. So you can tell people, hey, I'm doing this again, or did you love this? Great, I'm gonna have XYZ type of event two weeks from today. But then you can follow up with them um, at, um, for, for the next event. Another thing to do, um, I'll get this guys and I'll share it. Katie Hill is like a Canva wizard. And at her smoothie bowl parties, she made these little forms that has name, email, I would put phone number because I prefer text over email, but that's just me. Name, contact, right? Way to contact them. And the, the shake flavor that they wanted for their smoothie bowl. So when people get to her smoothie bowl event, she basically has them write down their orders because it's easier for her to manage. Like, okay, I'm gonna mix up this much chocolate, this much strawberry right now. But that card then gives her the thing to follow up with. And she also knows the flavor that they loved, right? So I'd be like, hey, Lisa, thank you so much for coming to my smoothie bowl party. How did you love that, you know, isn't the strawberry so good? You know, maybe remind me what toppings you put on it. You know, whatever, it just gives you more points to then jump off for a future conversation, okay? That's what I got, guys. How many events are you guys gonna plan? Seriously. And by the way, if you have not taken full advantage of the isogenicsare.com, register your events. You get five free membership codes. You get a $50 product coupon, which I believe now goes automatically into your back office. It's not just a coupon code. You guys, I have, I have gotten no fewer than 25 codes that I've been using, been helping people use, um, people that are becoming consultants, things like that. The fact that the company is offering that up, you need to be absolutely taking advantage of because every person that comes to your event then should be able to, you should be able to say, I have free membership for you, whether it's a corporate wide, promotion going on or not. Okay, so if you haven't done that yet, guys, you really, really, really need to take advantage of that. And again, it's isogenicsare.com. Okay, so I hope everybody has already been doing that. So, okay guys, I am going to stop the recording.